Hi, I'm Jim Ward of the Middle Country Public Library, along with my colleague, Stephanie Vecchio, and we'd like to welcome you to episode 14 in our History Bites series. 2020 is the 20th anniversary of the famous Subway World Series that took place between the New York Yankees and the New York Mets. Today, we will discuss that amazing series and how it, and how it energized New York City like no other World Series. The Yankees had created a dynasty beginning in 1996 when they won the, fir- the, the World Series for the first time since 1978. They then won two in a row in 1998 and 1999. The Mets, for their part, had not won a World Series since 1986 and were itching to return to glory. The Yankees of 2000, however, were not the juggernaut champions of years past. In September 2000, they lost 15 of their last 18 games, but still hung on to win the American League East Division. The Mets challenged the Braves for the, for the National League East crown for much of the season before falling short and again winning the wild card. They had an easier road than their crosstown rivals, however, beating the Giants and Cardinals in the playoffs to set up this historic matchup. In the American League division, division series, the Yankees faced the upstart Oakland A's, who gave the Yankees a run for their money, but the Yankees held on and won the series three games to two. The Yankees returned to form in the American League Championship Series against the Seattle Mariners, defeating them in six games. This all set up a New York World Series, the Subway Series, between the Yankees and the Mets. The rest of the country might have been indifferent to the first clash between New York teams since the Yankees beat the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1956, but New York was transfixed. This World Series was the lowest rated ever up to that time. Before the Fall Classic, Mets outfielder Benny Agbayani jokingly predicted to Howard Stern that the Mets would win in five games. The Mets were confident, though. They had stars such as Mike Piazza and and Edgardo Alfonso and two aces in Al Leiter and Mike Hampton. Bobby Valentine's team also had a spirit of togetherness. The Yankees were a dynasty going for a three-peat and their fourth World Series championship in five seasons. The Yankees possessed a cadre of veteran players who were responsible for the championships in past years, such as Derek Jeter, Bernie Williams, Paul O'Neill, Tino Martinez, David Cohn, and Andy Pettit. The 2000 World Series took place from October 21st to October 26th. Game one was at Yankee Stadium, and it was the longest World Series game in history, four hours and 51 minutes, and a victor was not not determined until the 12th inning. Lefties Andy Pettit and Al Leiter threw up zeros through five innings. After the Mets' Todd Zeal narrowly missed a two-run homer in the top of the sixth, the first of several near misses by the Mets in this series, David Justice gave the Yankees a 2-0 lead with a double in the bottom of the inning. The Mets battled back to tie it in the seventh when pinch hitter Bubba Trammell's bases-loaded single drove in two runs. One out later, Edgardo Alfonso followed followed with an infield single to score Todd Pratt and give the Mets a 3-2 lead. But closer Armando Benitez couldn't hold the lead in the ninth, allowing Chuck Knobloch's bases-loaded sacrifice fly to send the game into extra innings. In the bottom of the twelfth, Jose Vizcaino hit an RBI single to left field and won the game for the Yankees, giving them a 1-0 lead in the series. Roger Clemens would be pitching for the Yankees in Game 2 and would lead to drama from an incident that occurred between him and Mets catcher Mike Piazza. In July, the two teams played a two-ballpark doubleheader. Clemens had beamed Piazza in the head in one of the games. Tensions were high when Piazza came to bat in the top of the first inning in Game 2. Piazza hit a foul ball and his bat shattered. A chunk of lumber bounded towards Clemens, who threw it toward Piazza. Clemens said he thought the shard was the ball. Piazza walked toward the mound and said, What's your problem? as players came out of both dugouts. But there was no fight, no ejections either. 
Clemens was dominant, picking up from his 15-strikeout masterpiece against the Mariners in the ALCS by striking out nine, walking none, and allowing just two singles in eight innings. The Yankees, meanwhile, were building a 6-0 lead for the Rocket off of Mike Hampton and the Mets' bullpen, highlighted by Scott Brocious's homer to lead off the second inning. The Mets scored five times in the ninth on a two-run homer by Piazza off of Jeff Nelson and a three-run Jay Payton shot off of Mariana Rivera, but it was too little too late, and the Yankees grabbed a 2-0 series lead. The series moved to Shea Stadium for Game 3, and the Mets climbed back into the series while ending a couple of impressive Yankee streaks. With a 4-2 victory, the Mets snapped the Yankees' 14-game World Series winning streak and handed Orlando Hernandez his first-ever postseason defeat. He had been 8-0 before this. Benny Agbayani gave the Mets the win with a go-ahead double in the eighth inning. John Franco, appearing in his first World Series ever, got the victory, and Armando Benitez redeemed himself by closing out the win that narrowed the Yankees' series lead to 2-1. The Yankees made a strong statement quickly in Game 4. On the first pitch of the game, Derek Jeter homered off of Bobby J. Jones for a 1-0 lead. The Yankees added single runs in the second and third innings to take a 3-0 lead, Paul O'Neill tripled and scored on Scott Brocious's sack fly in the second, and Jeter scored the third run by tripling in the third inning and coming home on Louis Soho's ground out. The Mets clawed back into the game on Mike Piazza's two-run blast in the bottom of the third, but they couldn't find a way to tie the score against the Yankees' bullpen. David Cohn relieved Denny Neagle to face Piazza in the fifth and got him to pop out. Winning pitcher Jeff Nelson went scoreless, Mike Stanton struck out the only two batters he faced, and Mariano Rivera pitched two innings for his sixth career World Series save, tying Roly Finger's record. It was another one-run game, but the Yankees were now just one win away from three-peating. Game 5 featured another battle between the two lefties who started this series, Leiter and Pettit and neither disappointed in the rematch. Bernie Williams opened the scoring by breaking an 0-for-15 streak with a second-inning solo homer. But the Mets scratched ahead with two runs in the bottom of the inning on two balls that traveled a total of about 100 feet. With runners on second and third, Leiter laid down a perfect bunt to first. Tino Martinez bobbled and then tossed to Pettit covering, but Pettit dropped the ball, allowing the tying run to score. Then Benny Agbayani followed with a slow roller to third that Scott Brocious couldn't bear hand, and the Mets had a 2-1 lead. Derek Jeter, the eventual series MVP who batted 409 that series, homered to tie the score at 2. Leiter kept going until the ninth inning, and the game appeared to be headed to extra innings after he struck out the first two batters but Jorge Posada walked and Scott Brocious singled to put runners at first and second. Louis Soho slapped a ball up the middle on Leiter's 142nd pitch that just made it past the infield, allowing the go-ahead run to score. Jay Payton's throw hit Posada and bounced away, allowing Brocious to score in an insurance run. It looked as if that could come in handy when Piazza strode to the plate with a man on and two out against Mariano Rivera. Piazza hit the ball hard, causing everyone at Shea Stadium to hold their breath for an instant, but the ball, and the Mets' comeback chances, died in Bernie Williams' glove just shy of the warning track in left center field. It was four victories by a total of five runs, but it made the Yankees the first to win three consecutive titles since the A's did it from 1972 to 1974. Twenty years later, New York baseball fans can still distinctly remember the Subway Series and the excitement it brought to all. The Mets were the underdog, but they played hard and showed their grit, passion, and desire to win. The Yankees proved themselves to be a continual force to be reckoned with, creating an incredible, everlasting dynasty with their three-peat. And who knows? 
maybe one year soon, these two New York teams will meet again in October. Thank you everyone for joining us for today's episode. If you enjoyed this video, click like, and if you watched on YouTube, hit subscribe. Thanks so much, and we'll see you all next time.